What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Field channel where we speak the truth, we be honest, and we give our takes on AEW. It is Wednesday night, December 8th, 2021. We do not have Cameron Johnson tonight here on the Big Fight Field channel. He will be back Friday to talk about AEW Rampage with us. Tonight, we got Wesley Williams. Uh, what is up, dude? I thought tonight's show was awesome. I thought the crowd was on fire the entire night. And I would say uh, the matches were really good, too. So, how are you doing? What did you think of the show? Tell the people, man. A little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, tonight's uh, episode of Dynamite was great tonight in Long Island, New York, man. Uh, I mean, a, 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 almost a packed house, man. You had, like, about 10,000 people there tonight in Long Island there to support AEW. I mean, it's unbelievable, man. Uh, the reach that they're they're getting with, uh, with the pro wrestling audience, it's, it's wonderful to see. But uh, overall, very fun show. Some pretty crazy moments throughout the show. Uh, you know, a guy really... I mean, it took the crowd for a loop, too. The crowd was, like, going all over the place with their reactions tonight. It was very... And Dan's got cheers. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, a wild night, uh, to, to say the least, man. But uh, a lot of a lot of great action, a lot of great builds for winners coming next week. I'm very much looking forward to uh, next week's theme show. It's going to be a lot of fun. I got matches set up for Rampage on Friday. So a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things set up. Uh, but overall, I, I had a very fun time with Dynamite, as I do every single week, of course. But uh, tonight, very good show. There's a lot coming up for AEW, like I just told Wesley off of camera. We got winners coming next week. I think the week after that, Tony Khan said on an interview, it's going to be Holiday Smash, and then there's going to be a uh, a Christmas edition of Rampage. And we already know one of the matches that are going to happen on that show. We will talk about that tonight. Uh, December 29th, uh, New Year's Smash, Daily's Place. Their boy will be there. Um the 5th January, the debut on TBS, and then that Saturday is Battle of the Belts, which is a TNT special. So we got a lot on the table for um, for AEW, uh, not only for the rest of the year, but for the first week, the first couple weeks into 2022 in the TBS era. It's very exciting stuff, dude. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, AEW is definitely ending the year off in, in the best way possible. And I know Tony Khan is is set on uh, ending this year. What well, has been a crazy year uh, in professional wrestling all around. Uh, he's looking to end this year in just the biggest way possible, man. We got winners coming next week. We got the Christmas uh, Day rampage. I mean, we, we got a lot of stuff being set up. And of course, the new year, uh, with the new network with TBS. You know, it, it, we got that uh, debut to look forward to with Battle of the Bells and everything as well. So a lot of things set up, a lot of things that we're going to be talking about surrounding AEW going into the new year. Uh, but I'm all for it, man. I'm, I'm super excited. And uh, we're probably going to be in for some great surprises too, man. Surprise, some surprise appearances, maybe even next week, as, as soon as next week. So we're going to have to see what happens. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really, really um I'm looking forward to all of it, too. It's going to be crazy. And uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight's show. So just a couple programming notes um, before we start on uh, the review. Uh, we got uh, a couple AEW shows. Uh, the 25th Christmas. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a Rampage review then because Christmas Day. I don't want to do a... I don't want to come do a video on Christmas Day. I just want to spend time with family and all that stuff. The 29th, obviously, I won't be on to review Dynamite because um, I will be at the show in Jacksonville. And then that Friday, New Year's Eve, again, it's New Year's Eve. Not going to do a review on New Year's Eve. Plus, probably the college football playoff is going to be on then. And I, I probably want to watch that instead of Rampage. So there will not, um, unfortunately... The last review, the last AEW review um, on the channel in 2021 is not going to be, it's not going to be this Wednesday. It'll be the following Wednesday, the 22nd, just to let y'all know. And then we will pick it back up January 5th with the debut on TBS. So just a couple programming notes right there. Excuse me. Here on the channel, there'll be an AEW vlog, though. Um, on the 29th of December. So 
let's get into the show tonight. Um, this was the Long Island debut for AEW. AEW owns New York, is what everybody is saying. And um, the show opened up with MJF's theme music only for CM Punk to come out and interrupt. You know, this gives me flashbacks. Um, you know, when Pete, when you remember when people, when remember when Punk was about to make his debut, and there were some people out there like, oh, MJF should, someone like MJF should come out to Punk's music or something like that. And here we are. Uh, we have uh, Punk coming out to MJF's theme music first. It's crazy how things flip flop, right? Right. It, 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 was, it, the it was the perfect. It was the perfect. It was the perfect. Um, you know, this uh, punk coming out to uh, to MJF's uh, theme man was just too great. I mean, I, I, like this was just in the within the first couple minutes of the show, and already the show started off in the best way possible. And ha- having MJF's music cut in his hometown of Long Island for only for Punk to come on out and just heal the crowd in the best way possible, man. I mean, Punk, CM Punk probably was the most hated man on this show tonight. Like even more so hated than Cody. Like Cody came out at one point and got booed. But I think Punk was the biggest heel tonight, man. This guy. I mean, it's amazing. Like guys like him and guys like Danielson, they can be a baby face and be so beloved one minute, and then the next minute they're just like completely hated by the crowd because of actions they do. And it's just so it's so well done. It is so well done. The way they, they go again, it goes to show you what kind of true professionals these guys are, and you know how experienced they are in this business, man. So that already the show was off to just a absolute hot start. <laughs> And, and Punk was loving this up, too, because when he was speaking on the mic, he's getting booed. He, he was laughing in the ring. He knew exactly what he was doing. It, it's like when Brian had that promo in Virginia with Hangman Page. Like, Brian was obviously going to get booed. Now, tonight, we obviously didn't know CM Punk was going to get booed in MJF, of all people's hometown. And, um, yeah, uh, CM Punk got booed. I, I would have never thought that, man. He even got they they were even chanting shut the f up at him and uh, but he was trashing on is this your guy that he's a Brit, he started talking about Britt Baker again um, I guess Britt Baker is a main focus in this feud between these guys but um, yeah he started talking about the Islanders and saying how they beat the Ottawa Center I, this line was funny even though. I don't want to disrespect my guy. He said the Ottawa. He, he said the New York Islanders beat the Ottawa Senators last night. That's like me when I beat QT Marshall two weeks ago. I gotta admit, I laughed. I, I laughed. That line was so good. Um, but that like the people weren't even singing to his theme song when he when he left the when he left the uh, the ring to go backstage. It was great stuff. Very weird, but it was great at the same time. So, yeah. and then, and then like the, I mean, I don't, I really watch hockey. I mean, if I had to pick a favorite hockey either. team, my, if I had to pick a favorite hockey team, it's probably the St. Louis Blues because I, I think I just kind of associate with them with the Cardinals a little bit. But anyway, yeah, the men, the Islanders, they must really be that bad because they were getting no love at all. Not just only in this segment, like even Max Caster dissed the Islanders tonight later on in the show. I'm like, this team must really suck if if at AW's just dogged on them this much, man. Island, like I don't know if I've seen a sports team get so hated in like one night by a by a pro wrestling company, but they did it with the Islanders, that's for sure. Oh <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, um, they're last in their division. So there you go. They are. They have uh, six wins, ten losses, and five overtime games. So there you go. Uh, records are a little bit weird in hockey. I don't watch hockey, but there you go. There's the uh, record for the Islanders. They're the so they got trashed on because they are the worst team in their division. And right, right, right ahead of them is the Flyers, who I guess is my team, but I don't, again, I don't, I don't watch hockey, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't really care, but what I do care about was the segment, and the segment was great, that's all, that's all that, that's all I got to say about that one, so. Yeah, yeah. and now, now we, we're probably now going to get Punk and MJF uh, soon, uh, I guess it probably is going to happen uh, next week, since I, I feel like if it was, or, well, yeah, because of course MJF's well, going to Dante Martin next week, so, but uh, I think, 
I think now, like, now the seeds are, like, really, really planted, though, for this eventual match. Because now Punk wants the match uh, with MJF. When it happens, we'll have to see. But, uh, I, I, man, I'm, I'm loving this build. I've been, just been loving this whole interaction, all the interactions between these two guys, man. I mean, they've done such an exceptional job really building this whole thing up, man. And, I mean, honestly, you know, it, who knows? Maybe it's too early to call. But I, I think I totally have MJF be the first guy to pin Punk. Uh, oh, yeah. W for sure. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, I, I I don't know, man. I just I just can't see these guys on free television. Like this match has to be on pay per view, in my that's my opinion. Because um, Punk did say the next week he will be watching the Danielson Hangman Page match, and he said he wants next. So he's teasing that he's going for the world title. I don't think Punk's going to be near the world title picture anytime soon, in my opinion. Okay, maybe in 2022, but right now, I don't think so. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I, I, I just can't see Punk and MJF not happening at the uh, next pay-per-view, uh, Revolution, which is going to be right down the street, 25 minutes away. From my house, which I was going to say in the beginning, because I was so like, I literally marked out when that happened. So, <laughs> but I promise they will come to Tennessee. I promise, man, they got it. They got us. <laughs> Tony, Tony, don't let me down, man. You got to announce Tennessee sometime in 2022. I don't care when it is. Just announce Tennessee, Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville. Heck, go to freaking the small town of, of, of uh, Jackson, Tennessee. You know, go, go to Jackson, Tennessee or something, man. Just give me. Give me a Tennessee show, Tony Khan. I love you, man. I'm a big, big AEW fan. I feel like I kind of deserve it. I don't know. I might sound a little <laughs> selfish, but I feel like I kind of deserve it. I've been giving you guys love for so long, ever since the very beginning. Give me a show you, in Tennessee. You've been man. to an AEW show before, right? I have, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was it in 2020? Yeah, it was the very beginning of 2020. It was in uh, it was in um, South Haven, Mississippi. So that's like literally like a 30 minute drive from where I live. So. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with MJF and Punk. We did have the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal. And, um, you know, they gave MJF a, a whole video package walking out onto the football field of uh, Plainview, Long Island, New York. Uh, he's wearing a championship jacket. It's kind of the same one I have from my high school team. But uh, they cut the video package and they go into the crowd. Everybody's on their feet. Everybody's chanting MJF. Who would have thought in 2021 we were going to see this? And uh, his music hits. He comes out all smiley, kisses the ring. He 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 starts high fiving people in the crowd. He starts high fiving people in the crowd. He doesn't jump in the crowd, but he lunges to the people who are patting MJF on the back. These are MJF's people, man. You know. Yeah, and, and another thing, too, I didn't even actually catch this when it was happening, but people were saying online he mocked CM Punk's uh, debut, like, back into wrestling when he made his uh, AEW debut on uh, that Rampage episode in Chicago, and, you know, like, how he got down on his knees, just paw- looked at the crowd, and then came out, and then, like, you know, got got uh, interacted with the fans, so it's like, I love that MJF, like, ripped off Punk's uh, return back into wrestling, and then earlier in the night, Punk rips off uh, it, like, he comes out to MJF's music, man. I mean, these guys are just, they're just screwing with each other in the best way, and it's so great. But, yeah, I mean, MJF getting the overly positive reaction he got, man. I mean, it, one p- part of me is like, well, it's his hometown, but at the same time, it's like, this guy is the most hated man in all professional wrestling. I mean, I, I, it was, I mean, a lot of people were talking about before the show, will he get a positive reaction like every other ho- hometown hero, or will he get the same negative reaction he gets in every other place he's at? But, wasn't that case that I man? This crowd was was pro MJF through and through. Uh, it was so insane to see, um, and uh, man, it's just it's wild. It's wild. I mean, 2021. Even now that we're we're at the very end of 2021, they still give us these very surprising and unbelievable moments. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely, man. So this battle royal. You guys know how I feel about Battle Royals. If you're an OG on the channel, I don't like Battle Royals. They're not important until like the final four or five. So um, we saw a face-off between Roll Hobbs and Wardlow. That was good. 
Yeah. Um, then Leo Rush eliminated Hobbs. I'm just trying to think of some of the big points in the Battle Royal. We had Leo Rush, um, someone else. I think it was Lee Johnson, maybe, and uh, Wardlow all battling on the on the uh, apron. Actually, Wardlow is on the uh, the outside. He's in the inside. The other guys are on the outside trying to eliminate him. MJF pushes uh, Rush and Lee Johnson and. Uh, Wardlow falls with them. So MJF accidentally um, he accidentally eliminates Wardlow. And again, he stared, he had a dark stare right into MJF's sides, which is planting more seeds um, for the turn between um, MJF and Wardlow down at the near future. And then uh, Frankie Kazarian comes in, MJF eliminates him. So we're down to the final three of MJF, Ricky Starks, and Dante Martin. Um, Dante Martin is a member of Team Taz until he wasn't when he throws Ricky Starks over the top rope and the final two of the of this battle royal is MJF and Dante Martin and they will meet next week in the finals of the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal. It looks like MJF will be keeping that ring for another year. That is good. That's a main part for MJF's character and um, we are getting that match next week which should be amazing. But Dante Martin turns on Team Taz. I'm kind of shocked that uh, I'm, I'm kind of shocked it happened this early. I thought um, they were going to drag this out just a little bit more. Maybe have him turn in January or February. And then at the pay-per-view, we would get a tag team match with uh, Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks versus Leo Rush and Dante Martin. We might be getting that match sooner. Who knows? But... Um, yeah, um, Taz is pissed. Ricky Starks is pissed. He beats up Dante Martin. MJF comes in, tries to make the heroic save, and he joins Ricky Starks on the attack. Then Punk comes in, gets booed. MJF runs. We got a stare down between Punk and Ricky Starks. Uh, Ricky Starks eats a GTS from CM Punk. And that was the way that the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal ended. Um, the final few minutes was very fun. The face-off between Wardlow and Hobbs was great. We're getting Dante Martin against uh, MJF in the finals of the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal. And it looks like um, Dante Martin and Leo Rush swerved Team Taz. So a lot happened in this Battle Royal. And it's a lot to take in, but it was fun for what it was. Uh, a lot, a lot to talk about with this match, man. Yeah, I, I honestly, like, I'm, I'm with you with the battle royals. You know, I, I don't like them either. But I honestly actually enjoyed this battle royal. I didn't feel like it was overstaying its welcome. I thought they really got through uh, all the stuff that they got through like in a timely fashion, and it didn't feel like overbearing because you only had like about 12 guys in that match, so it wasn't like yeah, just a huge sea of wrestlers just, like, in one ring together where it's just, like, you can't even, like, you can't really pay attention not that much to the action. But so I felt like it really wasn't overwhelming in any way. So, but I, I enjoyed a lot of what they did here. The face-off with Wardlow and Hobbs was, was great. Love to see more of that in the future. Um, we had Rush eliminated Hobbs. That was a big elimination there. And then Wardlow being uh, inadvertently em eliminated by MJF, planting more seeds for their eventual feud, which – you know, is definitely coming probably sometime in 2022 that that feud is going to be coming. Um, and then the end with uh, Dante Martin, Ricky Starks, and Jeff being the final three. Dante swerving all of Team Taz, eliminating Ricky Starks and uh, MJF and Rick uh, and Dante Martin being the final two. And that match next week for uh, the Dynamite Diamond Ring should be great, man. We all know how great Dante Martin is and we all know how great MJF is. So that's a recipe for a, a wonderful match next week. Um, it's going to be very fun to uh, to watch. And uh, 
Yeah, man, I, MJF, I got to give props to MJF, man. He actually kind of had me for a second after the match. He had me a little bit where he was walking away, and he was asking the Long Island crowd, like, should I come back and help him? I don't know. And uh, he's like, I'm, I'm a baby face here. I don't know. And then he comes back. He, I, he honestly did have me for a split second, like, wow, he actually might be the face here. And, but, nope, of course, he joins Ricky Starks on the beatdown. Well, he was the face tonight. If it between him and Punk, he, tonight he was the face. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the fact that Punk came out to more booze is like this is unbelievable. Like, I mean, it's it's like these guys. Like, Punk is somebody who is beloved by everybody and here in Long Island. He is just absolutely hated, man. He he probably made fun of the Islanders one, a little one too many times. I don't know, but um, but man, yeah, MJF. He, I gotta give props to him, man. I mean, the guy is such a great worker. He, he really is. He had me for a split second that he might actually save Dante, but. Uh, Punk sit, comes in for the save. It's a GTS of Starks. I uh, would love to see Punk and Starks in the program in the, in the future. I thought we were probably going to get that feud uh, a while back when Punk was feuding with Team Taz, but I really hope that's something we probably see sometime in 2022. But, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the way this was booked. And, again, Dante Martin, MJF, they should kill it uh, next week at Winter is Coming. should be a lot of fun. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, um we have to get into the next match. I think that was uh, eight-man tag, right? Yeah. Or was there something else before this? No, I think it was just the eight-man tag after this. Okay. So they randomly announced this eight-man tag, and I'm like, okay, uh, this is weird. So we had uh, Jurassic Express and Varsity Blondes against the Acclaimed and 2.0. Match was fine, I guess. The baby faces won. I really didn't get anything out of this match besides just a, a couple minutes of wrestling. Eddie Kingston came out and attacked Daniel Garcia. We got more with that after the match. And Jungle Boy tapped out Max, Max Caster. So I really don't have much to say about this. Yeah, I, I've noticed this kind of pattern with AEW, at least lately. They seem to, like, announce the card for Dynamite and then add, like, another match, like, the very last minute. I've noticed they, this trend they've been kind of going on. I don't know how I really feel about it. I kind of am not that uh, much of a fan of it because it's like, why just add a random match to the show for the sake of just having another match? It's just like, I mean, all your matches should have at least a little bit of importance, a little bit of build for it. Like, all, all the matches before that, that were announced ahead of time tonight had build to it. It had, like, oh, yeah. a storyline behind it. Like, this match was just really random. I, I I think they kind of explained it like, oh, these are kind of, like, the four top four teams in the rankings right now or something like They're that. They're not. I, 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 think, I don't think 2.0 is even in the top five, no. And so it's like... Not of the varsity blondes. Yeah, so they, they showed, like, their records and stuff. It's like, well, okay. But, I mean, it, it would probably make more sense in the context of if these were the top four teams. So it's like maybe you could have, maybe you could have had, like, a fatal four-way tag match would have made a little bit more sense. But, yeah, I, I kind of hope AEW doesn't keep doing this a whole lot more because I've just noticed a trend with, like, they'll announce a whole bunch of matches for Dynamite ahead of time. Then the very last minute, they just add uh, a, another match to Dynamite for the sake of having another match just to fill time. So it's like, I get you can want to fill time with certain things, but it's like you got to gotta give each of these segments and matches important. So very random, but I thought the match was pretty fun for what it was. Uh, I don't... But ultimately, the only thing I was really, really interested in was after the match when 2.0 uh, and Daniel Garcia uh, battled it out with Eddie Kingston and Ortiz. Santana wasn't there tonight, uh, but it, we had Ortiz there. So if uh, and we know Jericho is in the middle of a little bit of a feud with Garcia and 2.0 as well because he got uh, ambushed by them uh, just uh, the week prior. So uh, if this is leading to Jericho hiring his uh, his boys and Proud and Powerful to team up with Eddie Kingston and a six-man Tag eventually against 2.0 Daniel 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 Garcia, sign me the sign me right up for it. Yeah. I really want to see that six man because you put Kingston together with Santana and Ortiz, man, holy crap! You're gonna have yourself a, a wonderful kind of storm there with, with those three guys. So I really hope that's what they're leading to. I feel like that's what it is with Ortiz being involved tonight. I feel like now we're probably gonna get Proud and Powerful in a program with Eddie Kingston alongside. I mean. It's, it's wonderful, man. And good. And yeah, I mean, honestly, man, and we really need to see more proud and powerful on our TVs, uh, uh, you know, not just on like elevation and dark. Like these guys need to be on dynamite and on rampage, man. These are these guys. I mean, that's the thing, man. Like, yeah, I think like, you know, a couple of years ago, these guys were talked about as being like, you know, contested with the Usos is like the best tag team in pro wrestling. And it's like, 
I mean, we really need to get these guys put 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 on a higher pedestal again because it's like I feel like Brett Proud and Powerful been kind of floating around, not really doing all that much, and so. I really like that they're starting to kind of give them, get them involved in some high profile feuds. And so it's like, I really want to see these guys flourish in tag team action to where they'll eventually get themselves a, a tag title shot. They are in the top five rankings in the tag team division right now. So that's a promising sign there, but I really want to see more Santana Ortiz on our screens. Cause I feel like us AEW fans for sure deserve it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So um, after this, we went to a, tag team match with Young Bucks, Rocky Romero, and Chuck Taylor. If you had to ask me, this was probably my match of the night. I thought this match was awesome. Slow build in the beginning up to a really high, intense, chaotic ending. Uh, I thought the match was awesome. All four guys looked great. There were a bunch of times that they made me believe that uh, Chuck and Rocky Romero were actually going to win this match. Um, you know, um, the uh, awful waffle, I think that's what it's, uh, what kind of a finisher name is that, man? Well, it's Chuck Taylor. You gotta, I mean, it kinda, I guess it kind of goes together with his gimmick, so. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, he hit the pile driver and he, and uh, Matt Jackson kicked out. Then, um, Actually, on the outside, um, at one point, Adam Cole absolutely blasted Orange Cassidy in the face with a super with a, a pump kick, and then in the ring, um, Orange Cassidy has his glasses on. Adam Cole is going to super kick. Uh, I think it was uh, Rocky Romero, and then Orange Cassidy starts doing the shin kicks, and um, Adam Cole turns around, and Nick Jackson. Kicks super, uh, super kicks Orange Cassidy right in the face, and folks, his glasses went flying. I mean, literally, did you did you see Orange Cassidy's glasses go flying, dude? Yeah, it was insane, man. Like, not to mention too, Orange Cassidy is a killer seller, man. This, this guy knows how to sell. Oh yeah, in, man. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like, you got to put him up there with like one of the best sellers in, in wrestling, you know. And, and that's what's awesome about his characters because he's so lazy. Right. And like so undefensive of himself that when he takes a big bump like a super like a super kick like that, like he's gonna sell that like he you know, he literally just he like like Nick Jackson killed him or something, you know? Right. Yeah. But yeah, um, this was um this was very fun though, man. I really enjoyed this. This was this yeah. was, it was I mean I, I knew what these four guys they were gonna kill it, so ending. Um at first, uh Chuck Got set up. Uh, yeah, it's Chuck who got set up in the uh, the melter driver. Then he actually countered it, and uh, uh, Matt got sent into Nick. Chuck, uh, yeah, Chuck rolled up uh, Matt Jackson, which I actually thought was going to be the end of the match. Matt Jackson kicked out, and then Rocky Romero tagged in, and he was going for – I forget who he was going for, but uh, Chuck uh, – uh, um, Matt Jackson – brilliant counter on Rocky Romero and we got the Meltzer driver one two three the young bucks defeated um they, they they defeated Chuck Taylor and Rocky Romero after after the match all the super click are beating up on the best friends uh they beat up on Orange Cassidy more Orange Cassidy takes upon him a sunrise uh, they beat up Rocky Romero. Will Yuta comes out, goes right after Adam Cole, and then takes a super kick from the Young Bucks. Then we set up the BTE trigger onto Orange Cassidy, and all of a sudden, uh, the Best Friends theme music plays. We see a white car pull up. When you see a white car pull up, you know who it is. So Trent... Is back. He came out with Sue, his mom, driving in the car. And I, this will be the first thing I say about this. Trent is in tremendous shape. He looks to be in absolute tremendous shape. He's got no hair anymore. Trent's bald. And he, he took out the super click all by himself. 
and we got the be you get the best friends are actually back together now as a faction. Cause like with Tr without Trent there, like Yuta being there as the replacement, it's like yeah, okay, whatever. He's he's fine. He's he's like a young lion or what they call a new Japan. He's like a young lion or whatever. But now Trent's back. They got Trent, Yuta, Satlander. I, 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 would you consider Rocky Romero and the best friends? I mean, I would say so, considering that they're uh, working with chaos now. I'd, I'd imagine so. Yeah, Trent's back. That's that's awesome. I'm happy to see him back. Like I said, he's in tremendous shape. And now with this feud, which by the way, I think is an interim feud for the Super Click until bigger things happen. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and um, with that feud, I think as of right now. This is an interim feud for the Super Click, and people are already complaining about Adam Cole, saying he's not in a big enough spot in AEW, or AEW's wasting him. This guy debuted three months ago, okay? He debuted three months ago. What do you expect him to be the world champion right now? Like, that's not how it works. A feud with... Um, a, a feud with Orange Cassidy, uh, short-term, is not going to kill... Adam Cole whatsoever because there are there's going to be bigger things maybe in a, in a month that they might be in a bigger feud a month from now but now we could see uh the actual best friends Chuck and Trent against the Young Bucks uh six man tag with Cole and the Super Click against uh Orange Cassidy Chuck and Trent and my opinion would well, I think we're gonna get sooner rather than later Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy. That's the money match in this feud. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get that sooner rather than later. So what do you think about this match? The Trent return and the possibilities now that Trent's back. Yeah, very fun tag team match here. Uh all four guys really killed it. I honestly I came into this match thinking it could be a toss up. You know, the I I I you know more so I had the Young Bucks winning, but I thought in my head too, like well, Romero and um, Taylor could get the win, and it probably it really wouldn't hurt the Bucks, you know, if Romero and Taylor had picked up the win. But the Young Bucks did end up winning. But man, they they did, uh, you know, like like you with you, Joseph, they did catch me a couple of times in this match where I thought Romero and uh, and Taylor were going to win, uh, but that wasn't the case. And then after the match, we of course see the return of Trent and Sue and the midi van. I mean, all of it just came together in the best way, man. And Trent. Uh, like you've been talking about, Joseph, I mean, the guy the guy looks fantastic. I mean, he he came back and he's looking just really he's looking refreshed, renewed. And uh, and it, it's just great to see him back, man. And uh, now we actually have like the real best friends back. Um, and so it's, you know, and like, you know, I, I agree with you, Joseph, with Wheeler Yuta. It's like, yeah, he's he's a fine, you know, addition to to the group. But, you know, without Trent there, it really was missing an element, you know, because the best friends are. You know, honestly, when you have them full force, they are kind of honestly one of the most over acts in AEW. And Trent was really a big part of that. And so yeah, he the, was. Fact that he, the fact that he's back, um, you know, and, you know, it really sucked the last time he did return because he had just came back from an injury before that. And then he had to leave again to get neck fusion surgery. But now he's back once again. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can have Trent healthy 100 percent, you know, and, and uh, because it's just great to have him back. But, yeah, now. You know, like you mentioned, Joseph, you know, we get a lot of possibilities. We get probably the Super Click versus Best Friends in Orange Cassidy or the Young Bucks versus Best Friends tag team action. We've got a lot of a lot of big uh, time matchups here. And maybe we'll see more involvement with Chaos uh, sometime in the future, man, going into 2022. You know, I mean, 2022, I imagine, is going to be an even crazier year for all elite wrestling and uh, for professional wrestling as a whole. So, you know, with best friends, you know, rubbing elbows with the chaos and pretty much being a part of the chaos faction in New Japan now, you know, who's to say we get an Okada appearance sometime in 2022, man. You know, it could very well happen. Oh, it's definitely going to happen. It's, it's definitely, definitely going to happen. Right. You know, so, I mean, because we've already seen some crazy stuff happen this year, man. It's it's bound to happen. Um, and, you know, honestly, man, next week's winter is coming. Uh, we got Bobby Fish going to be ringside. Uh, for the Wheeler U to Adam Cole match on Rampage. Oh, that's Friday. on Friday. Yeah, that's, that's on, Friday. on Friday. And Bobby Fish is going to be ringside for that. It's very interesting because there's another man whose contract, I believe, is up in two days, WWE. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe next week, maybe next Wednesday night, a winner is coming. Maybe, just maybe, we get the full-time reunion 
of the Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly joining in with the Super Click and Bobby Fish. I think I think winter is coming. I feel like Garland, Texas would be a, an ideal place for Kyle O'Reilly to make that debut. We'll have to see what happens, but I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cer- uh, clear that Kyle O'Reilly ain't staying with WWE. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, and AEW, Tony Khan, they know what they're doing with all this. I mean, they wouldn't put Bobby Fish together with Adam Cole for just no reason, just because, oh, it's just, we're, we're just giving Bobby Fish something new. No, no, no. They know exactly what they're doing. Kyle O'Reilly is coming. Whether it's next week, I don't know. But I don't think one thing's for sure, man. He's coming, and we're going to see the Young Bucks together with the Undisputed Era, and we could see the, the formation of the Undisputed Elite Maybe as soon as next week, we'll have to see. But uh, Kyle O'Reilly's coming, man. That's definitely going to ramp things up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't mean to be—I don't mean to be the bad bad guy here, but honestly, I, I think uh, I think January fifth would be a better date to date Kyle O'Reilly. I wouldn't rush it. I'm not going to complain if he shows up next week. It's probably going to be an amazing pop. But right now. Um, the super click is feuding with the best friends, so I I feel like right now isn't a good time because they're excuse me because they're in the middle of a feud with the best friends right now, and just like you're not just gonna have Kyle O'Reilly show up and then Adam Cole, uh, Bobby Fish, and uh, him attack the Young Bucks while they're in the middle of a feud. It, it doesn't make sense in my opinion. So I think they're gonna wait. Again, like I said, this feud with the best friends and Orange Cassidy, it's not a long-term feud. It's not going to be like the feud they had with Christian Cage and Jurassic Express, which is going to lead up to a big pay-per-view match. It's probably going to be a short-term feud. The feud will probably culminate on TV. And uh, then we get into the Kyle O'Reilly showing up and... The Young Bucks and Kenny versus the Undisputed Elite or whatever. We'll see what happens. Kenny is still injured. He's uh, taking some time. He's taking some well-deserved time off. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Man. It, it's exciting, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's just so many amazing things still to come with, with AEW, man. I mean, you know, not just a Kyle O'Reilly or whatever. I mean, we're, we're – I mean, you know, we could very well see Johnny Gargano uh, in AEW at some point. No, I, 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 mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, anything's possible these days, man. I mean, and, and not to mention you got all the released talent from WWE that I still have no compete clauses at the moment. Those are going to be coming up in 2022. And I, there are quite a few uh, people on those lists that I can definitely see uh, in AEW ring. But wherever they go, just as long as it is WWE, they're, gonna, they're definitely going to kill it, uh, whether that be MLW, New Japan. Uh, NWA, which wherever they want to go, man. I mean, pro wrestling outside of WWE, not just in AEW, is flourishing right now, man. I mean, there are so many amazing things happening, like in, in Impact, NWA, uh, New Japan, uh, GCW. You have all this, all these promotions, like really going out of their way to create some big time moments. Uh, and 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 it's trending on social media too, man. I look on Twitter and I just see so many different like these so many different promotions like trending. i see gcw trending a lot more i kind of want to start tuning into gcw a little more because they're really making some big ways with what they're doing over there and so right. it's it, it, it's wild right now so 2022 is just gonna it, it's yeah i know tony Khan and aw are promising to give us some more uh insane moments that we're gonna look back on many years later and and think wow man what a great time that was to live through absolutely man absolutely so uh, we are going to move on. We talked about this match and topic for a very long time. So we had Sammy Guevara out there in the interview with Tony Giovanni talking about the TNT Championship Open Challenge the past couple of weeks. He has defeated Bobby Fish, Jay Lethal, and Tony Nice. And out came Cody Rhodes. His arm looked nasty. From that spot last week, um, how many times have you watched that spot with Andrade? Just be I've honest. Watched, I've watched it quite a few times on, Me on too. online, man. It's it's wild. I cannot believe Cody just did something like that, man. I mean, he really wanted to take that and just 
bring it up. I mean, the guy again, the guy ends up creating another insane moment in Atlanta, man. At first, it was the cage match with Wardlow uh, going into Revolution back in 2020. Now it's him literally suplexing himself through a table. Not even Andrade. Andre, again, Andrade barely took any of that. It was all Cody really uh, through that table, man. I mean. The guy, the what, the things he does for our entertainment, man. You really have got to respect the guy, Cody Rhodes. At the end of the day, man, because I mean, the fact that he would do something like that just for people to be, just to give him a, a few more little cheers, man. I mean, this guy is so dedicated to what he does; it's unbelievable. So, fun little story, real quick. Uh, Friday at the AEW Dark tapings, Cody Rhodes came out actually before the taping started, and talked to the crowd a little bit. Uh, about the, the Atlanta street fight with Andrade. And then he was making dad jokes and all that stuff. So he goes around. Uh, he's taking pictures with everybody in the front row before the show starts. And uh, this one guy, he, he takes a picture with this one guy. And the guy goes and he touches his back. And Cody's like, ah, oh, how dare you touch my back? I thought that was funny. So I just wanted to share that with yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, like, he was just he was just cracking jokes. He wasn't like yeah. being a dick or anything. He was just no, you know, ah, oh, how yeah. dare you? Yeah, man. I I mean, I'd love to honestly meet the guy Cody Rhodes uh, and for just tell him how much I respect the hell out of him, man. I mean, th- this guy really does so much for our entertainment, and you know, it's. Uh, well, I mean, I, I really do still feel like we're getting a slow burn with this whole thing with Cody, man. And we we saw it even more so here with this uh, this little promo exchange he had with uh, Sammy, um, and oh. you know, so get into that uh right now i didn't mean to cut you off there by the way oh no you're good you're good you're good he comes out and he says from one good gentleman to another you have an open challenge for christmas day which is a rampage episode and he says that open challenge has now been filled tony khan made it official you'll be defending the title against me and i'm like oh no no, why? Why does Cody need to get a TNT title match? And then he shakes his hand. He says, good luck, kid. He teases leaving the heel tunnel, and then he leaves the babyface tunnel. Then the segment's not done there. Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky, they're up on a press box. Sam Guevara is looking at them. And Ethan Page says, oh, Cody Rhodes just comes out and says, I had a title match. You know what I had to do to get my title match against Sammy? I had to scratch and claw on my way, win matches to, in order to get my championship match. And said he then said, he said, Dan Lambert will be back very, very soon. And I'm like, oh, great. Can't wait for him to come back. But then Scorpio Sky got on a microphone. They talked about how Sammy's dodging the top five. And Scorpio Sky is in the top five in the AEW rankings. And um, with that being said, uh, looks like we are teasing a TNT championship match between Scorpio Sky and Sammy Guevara pretty soon. Um, I feel like with Sammy defending the title on Christmas Day, I feel like that's a good match to realistically do for Battle of the Belts. So that's what I see coming out of this segment. It was fine, and we are getting Cody Rhodes and Sammy for the TNT Championship. Uh, I'm not a fan of Cody getting the title match, but I will say this. Uh, they talked about how they this was the first ever Dynamite match on... This was the first ever match on AEW Dynamite back in 2019, back when Sammy Guevara was a, young, a youngster, and he was a heel and all that stuff. And... Uh, Sammy said, I've been waiting for this match for two years. And like, you know what? I do want to see this match again because they had a, a they had an awesome match last time. So I think they're gonna do even better this time. There's a championship on the uh on the line. I, I just hope Cody doesn't win the TNT title, dude. Can you imagine the reaction? Yeah, I, I don't think he's winning. I, I think Sammy's retaining, uh, especially since they're now like now building up to a, a eventual feud with Sammy and Scorpio Sky and Scorpio Sky being in the top five ranking. So uh, I do think also that Battle of the Belts is the ideal place for uh, Scorpio and Sammy to happen. I, I really don't think Cody's going to win that. I, I, AW knows the reactions Cody's getting. They're not just going to throw the title on him for a third time. 
I, I do think Sammy's going to get the win. And Sammy lost even also the, the that uh, last time they faced off in the first ever episode, uh, first ever episode of uh, AEW Dynamite, the first ever match on Dynamite. Uh, Sammy did lose that match because he was new, he was fresh coming in. Cody, you know, being the the EVP, being the big star uh, at that point, you know, Cody getting that first ever win on Dynamite. So now I feel like the the tables are going to turn. I do feel like Sammy's going to get that win back and retain the TNT title, and then we'll get Sammy and Scorpio probably at Battle of the Belts uh, January 8th. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm Sammy versus Cody, That I mean, they killed it that, that first ever matchup they had, and I do believe now with them being, uh, you know, with Sammy definitely being more experienced now uh, and now being the TNT champion, I do feel like these guys are going to deliver an even better match uh, this go around. So a little treat for us uh, on Christmas Day, man, and a good old Christmas present from AEW, if you ask me. So. Man, I'll tell you what, you sound much more confident than I do, so – so I just don't think AEW, AEW. See this. If this were WWE, they totally put the title on Cody. They would totally do it. They because because WWE is all about trying to gain heel heat, even though they do it in the freaking worst way possible. So I I don't I do not see Cody winning, and that would be stupid if they did. If they would just give them the title for a third time, Sammy needs to lose that title to somebody. Like we can all collectively know, like okay, give this person because Cody just can't keep winning the TNT title all like over and over and over again. You know, like we don't want to Charlotte flair the guy where we're just going to give him like 15 title reigns or something. But I, I do believe Sammy's going to get that win on uh, on Christmas day. So, yeah. So, um, by the way, this might be a shot. I don't know, but uh, if it was up to bully Ray too, I'm pretty sure he would want Cody to win too, because it's all about the heat. Well, they're all about the heat, man. According to Bully <laughs> Ray, got to get that heel heat, you know? Technically not a heel, though, so. Yeah, just heat. Yeah, just good old good old heat, you know. But I don't know, man. They they got some weird takes over at Busted Open, but it's whatever, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. they're, most of the time, they're cool. Yeah, most sometimes. of the time. I, I, uh, I like uh, Dave LaGreca. He's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I like him. I love his feud with Thunder Rosa. <laughs> Dude, him and Thunder Rosa just hate each other, and it's like the best thing. <laughs> they made up. Did you know that? Oh, they did. Okay, well that's good. They're, you know they're friends yeah. now. No, that's good. Yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, you just gotta you just gotta make up and be friends in this in this cruel world that we live in. So you know. I haven't listened to that show since like October though, so I gotta really? get back to it. So. Yeah, yeah, but you know they they have their moment. It's it's you know it can be back and forth with them, but you know they're not they're not too bad. They're not as bad. Definitely not as bad as certain other creators in this freaking community. I'll tell you that. Ted, uh, Jamie Hader versus Riho. Uh, poor little Riho took a massive beating right here. And let let me tell you, Jamie Hader did too. And uh, I'm not, but Riho just took a massive beating for how small she is. Um, I'm just trying to think. Help me think here, like. The back bait, the back breaker that Taz was showing, like, my God, um, the crucifix towards the end of the match, yeah, like Jamie Hader just, just fall on her shoulders, and then uh, Riho hit the double knees for the win. I, I, I honestly thought the match was great. Yeah, I, I, it was a really great match. Britt Baker attacked uh, Riho, uh, Rebel put the glove on the wrong hand. So the lockjaw kind of looked weird, but um, it was fine. The match was great, though. I really yeah. liked the match. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was honestly pretty. Kind of, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been, you know, too crazy about about Riho. You know, I know she's very beloved in the community, but and it's not like I'm saying I hate her. I don't. She definitely has had great matches. I mean, her her match with Serena D at Full Gear last year was was awesome. Uh, her her collisions with Nyla Rose. Uh, earlier on in the AEW, uh, early, early stages of AEW, those were great. So Rio knows how to work. Uh, I just, you know, I don't know. I've just never been that like attached to her character as much as everybody else. But I will say this, her and Jamie Hader did kill it tonight. Honestly, I'd probably say this might've been my match of the night personally, because I thought these two women really went in and killed it. Um, and I, I figured, you know, Jamie Hader, she's worked, you know, she used to work in stardom. She used to work with a lot of the Joshi wrestlers. And so, She's very, she works very well already with, with these types of, uh, these type of women and stuff. So I figured going into this match that these two were really going to collide uh, very well. I'm not sure if they've competed against each other before 
uh, this at all, at all, like not like in AEW, but I'm talking like maybe in stardom. Uh, I'm not sure if yeah, any stardom fans out there, if you want to give me a, a history lesson on that, feel free to in the comments. But uh, but I thought they worked really, really well. Um, and of course, Rio picks up the win, uh, getting momentum on her side, going into her uh, title match with Britt Baker. Not sure when that's coming. I, I, I would probably guess maybe you do that at Battle of the Belts as well. Maybe go ahead and build that up a little more to January 8th. Uh, so it seems like that might be the decision because I feel like if it's coming and winter is coming, that that's it's kind of a last minute deal. I just can't see that happening. So, and we also we also got an, uh, a women's match already booked. We'll get into it a little bit uh, booked for next week. So I think Battle of the Bells will probably be when we get Rio and uh, Baker for the women's title. We had a little segment before the uh, the uh, match announcements and then the main event. So Tony Schiavone was out there to interview. Uh, the Varsity Blondes, I don't know why he would interview Varsity Blondes. They haven't been on TV in months. It's so random, but I guess the point was the lights came, the lights went out, the lights came back on. Malachi Black was standing there, and he missed the Julia Hart right in the face, and she sold the shit out of this one. Man, I got to tell you, man, Julia Hart. They got to cast her for like the next Halloween movie or something, man. That scream that she's that she had tonight, like that's like an ideal scary movie scream. So I got to give Julia Hart credit on that. That was a, that was a great sell of the uh, Black Mist. I got to give her credit on that. Yeah, I honestly thought it was good. Like, yeah, yeah I was honestly surprised by. It. I was like, why? Well, I I was wondering like. Well, who, which one of them is he? Because I, I figured he was gonna miss somebody. It's like, who's he gonna do? And then he did Julia Hart. I was like, oh, okay. He's I, just thought he was gonna Julia Hart. Yeah. I thought he was gonna do Pillman. I thought he was gonna do Pillman. He a little bit actually did get on Pillman, like, but I guess it really didn't get in his eyes. But a little bit did. There was like a little bit of residue on his face from the miss. So it's like I was kind of thinking in my head, wow, Pillman just no selling the miss. <laughs> this like yeah, I'm not gonna put Malachi Black over, but I, it just you know. But it was. Oh uh, damn, bro, he missed it her right in the eye. So yeah, I know it's it's that was that was pretty wild. So I don't know what they're really setting up with that because like is Malachi Black maybe gonna face Brian Pillman Jr. one on one? Maybe I don't really know. But, I'm probably uh, guessing. I'm probably guessing if you if I was betting, man, that's probably gonna happen at at the show next week. So maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, hey, sign me up for Malachi and Brian Pillman, man. I would love to see that match. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh we got a couple match announcements. Uh AEW had a big announcement that uh they will be in uh Orlando for the Revolution pay-per-view. Also, Rampage, uh, the Friday before the pay-per-view, Fan Fest on Saturday, and the pay-per-view Revolution on Sunday. Friday's Rampage is looking like a big episode, man. We got Lucha Bros and FTR for the tag team titles. Did they take out the two out of three falls? They did. Because I didn't hear that. I didn't they hear did, them see. and I was bummed about it. I was like, oh, man, I was really hoping to see these guys go two out of three falls. But I guess they figured, like, they got they do have four matches on this show Friday, so maybe hey, they don't have enough time. It's okay. Them. It's okay. We got something big on Friday, too. So right, we got you, that. You're damn right we got something big. <laughs> hold on, hold damn on. right. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. We got um, a six-woman tag. I think it's Nyla Rose, the bunny, and Penelope for it. I don't understand that. I don't know. That six woman tag is so random to me, man. I don't know if I'm too into that, but it's whatever. I guess it's building up the TBS title match uh, or TBS <laughs> tournament match. I mean, Adam Cole against Willie Yuta. That's good, you know. Yeah, but good. the big one. This one. Tell the people. Tell, tell them. Oh, you know. Well, Taz himself had this big announcement on commentary. He, he was te- he was he was talking all about it all night on Dynamite tonight on commentary, and even he even talked about it on Twitter tonight on his Twitter page. But folks, it's been a long hey, time. Hey, coming. hey, hey, hold on. He he actually uh, with this hyped up announcement, he actually delivered pretty big. He delivered. I, I'd say he delivered in the biggest way possible, <laughs> folks. Folks, we we've been wanting Hook to be sent. For so long now. I mean, we got a literal Twitter page c- committed to sending Hook. Now this Friday, it's happening. The debut of Hook. Hook is coming. Forget winter is coming. Hook is coming. This Friday night, Rampage. Hook going 1v1 with Fuego del Sol. Fuego, you better be saying your prayers, eating your vitamins. Because this Friday, man, you are in for a rude awakening. Hook will be sent 
this Friday night, folks. I swear, Rampage better get an all-time high rating this Friday night, man. If this, if this announcement of Hook didn't draw the uh, millions and millions of people in, what are we doing now, man? What are we even doing? The debut of Hook is happening this Friday night, man. I mean, holy crap. I mean, we... We we got it. We it's gonna be a big time celebration. Cam's gonna be here for it, man. I mean, I can't oh even imagine God. how Cam's feeling right now. Cam's must must be spinning around the room right now because we're getting the all time debut of Hook, man. It is going to be insane. Hold on. Well, I saw a tweet from somebody on a, a Twitter. His name's Ga- uh, Garrett Kidney, and he tweets, uh, "AW Dynamite slash Rampage in Long Island featuring the debut of Hook is." The attendance of 9,583 fans. Uh, Monday Night Raw, which was last week in Long Island with Roman Reigns after the show. The attendance was 5,887. The dude said beneath, Hook is already a bigger draw than the entire WWE. <laughs> and then he says, acknowledge him in another tweet. <laughs> yeah, sorry, How awesome so, is sorry, that? Sorry, Roman. Sorry, Roman. The true tribal chief is here <laughs> and it is in the form of one hook respect hook respect <laughs> him put some respect on his name right someone put a video of his entrance i'm gonna watch it when we when oh we uh gosh, man we're gonna i'm telling you man we're gonna have a fun ass time this friday man Me, i you can't and wait have a fun ass time <laughs> i honestly can't wait now so Fuego, I'm a fan of you, buddy, but I'm not a fan of you on Friday. So. Yeah, Fuego, yeah, we Fuego. love you. Fuego, we, we're big Fuego enthusiasts around here, man. But sorry, man, this Friday it's all about Hook. You know, you know, I, I, with Adam Cole, it's all about the boom. It's all about Hook this, this Friday night, man. We, we got to put you to the side for one night, man. Fuego, you got to stop getting yourself in these kind of nasty situations. You got, you got yourself in situations with Miro. And, I mean, and Malachi Black's knocked your lights out, man. You got you got to give it, I mean, you got to stop putting yourselves in these situations, man. Come on. We love you, Fuego. Come on. Tess said he's going to show, Tess said he's going to show more than walking around in sweatpants and eating chips. So I saw somebody, I think, even say on Twitter tonight, I hope he makes his interest eating chips. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best thing ever. That would be the best thing ever. That would need to be in the AEW video game stat right there. <laughs> I can't wait for Friday now. Dude, it's it, we're gonna be it's such a newsworthy show just on that alone. I think like forget the other matches. We need to just talk about that match and the whole review and that'd be that. Like go a whole hour talking Hook's debut and then we just cut it off. There you go. There you go. We gotta talk about the main event on this show. It's sure. Brian Danielson versus John Silver. Match was very fun. Yes. John Silver went literally went kick for kick with Dan with uh Brian Danielson, who's one of the best in the world. So good for John Silver. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, he passed out. He didn't tap out. I like that. They protected Silver. They didn't make him tap out. He didn't get pinned. He passed out. I like that. And um, uh, Brian wins the match. He then says, um, the past few weeks, Evil Uno kicked his head in. Cole Cabana kicked his head in. Alan Angels kicked his head in. And then he forgot he didn't kick John Silver's head in. So what did he do? He had to kick John Silver's head in. Out came Adam Hangman Page for the save. He said something like, next week I'm going to stomp. Uh, the." Well, well, I forgot what he said, but he said cowboy in it, so. Yeah, he, you, uh, he said he was going to stomp the cowboy shit out of him next week. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. So, also, my God, we forgot to talk about the matches for winners coming. We had that world title match, MJF and Dante Martin, and Serena Deeb and Hikaru Shida 3. Yes. Looking forward to that one. So, mm-hmm. um, what did you think of the main event, the closing segment, and who's going to win next week? Thought this was a great main event, man. I, I love that uh, Silver and uh, Danielson went kick for kick there. Uh, man, John Silver is just so great in that ring, man. I love seeing him in, uh, in singles action. And uh, But, of course, we knew the result of this. We knew Danielson was going to pick up the win uh, ahead of the big title match next week. I uh, loved Hangman coming out and make the save. I love that, that, that simple, just straightforward promo. Cut. I'm just Next week, I'm going to stop the shit out of you. And, and we're just when we're off the air. Uh, and uh, now next week, it, it, here it is, man. It's can't believe it's already next week. Uh, we're getting Hangman versus Danielson for the AEW World Title. It is going to be a classic bout, man. It's probably going to be 
away could probably could very well be a, a match of the year contender when all is said and done with these two guys. Uh, but next week, man, I see Hangman retaining. Hangman ain't losing that title just yet. I do, I do believe Hangman is going over. And I do believe, and I, I've been saying this too. I mean, if Danielson wants to continue to be a heel, I'm fine with it because Danielson kills it as a heel. But I do believe that after the ne- the match next week, I do believe Danielson is probably going to shake hands with Hangman. You're, they're going to show the sportsmanship, and then uh, Danielson will go back to being a, a face again. Probably not a full, you know, not a cookie cutter baby face or anything like that. I still think he's going to toe the line some, um, but I do believe uh, Danielson is going to like probably go back to you know towing the baby face line uh, a little more so than the heel uh line uh, after next week but it, it's going to be awesome man we're in for a real treat with that match alone and of course we got mjf versus dante martin and then kakara shida versus serena deep three which is going to be a classic bout there i love the chemistry between those two women so they're going to kill it uh, of course but man we, we got a lot to look forward to i'm i'm, I'm surprised we only got three matches announced uh, so far for winners coming i figured we'd have I at least think, like i think they'll probably announce more on friday Probably, That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. They usually do that. So, uh, but we got Rampage. We got the debut of Hook to look forward to on Friday, man. But a great episode overall uh, tonight, man. We got winners coming next Wednesday. Cannot wait to talk about that. Uh, AW again, they're trying to end this year off in the biggest way possible. And uh, man, we're gonna. I think we're gonna be in for uh, a nice little treat uh, to cap off the uh, the year of 2021. Yeah, um, I'm taking Hangman Page to win as well. Yeah. No way he's dropping the title. I don't know who he could possibly feud next, next though. That that would be interesting in the coming next months because uh, MJF and CM Punk, again, I don't see them fighting on television. I just don't. That's a match you want to do on pay-per-view, in my opinion. So we'll see. At the end of the day, we'll see what happens. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight for your channel. Some amazing content coming up not only for the rest of this year but for 2022 as well um i did announce today that there are going to be two vlogs coming up very soon first one december 29th at uh new year smash jacksonville aew i will be there with nathan hansen once again and then that saturday new year's day uh i'm actually going to my first ever college football bowl game at the citrus bowl with uh, Iowa Hawkeyes against the Kentucky Wildcats. So that should be very fun. I will make both vlogs in the same week. And also tomorrow with the bye for the Miami Dolphins this week, we do not have a game. So I decided this week I'm going to sit down and me and my friend from uh, from college, you guys will, you guys will uh, know him tomorrow. His name is Zach, a big Miami Dolphins fan. I'm going to bring him on the show. We're going to talk about the state of the Miami Dolphins, Tua Tungavailoa, the playoff picture, and all of that stuff. And then Friday, myself, Wesley Williams, Cameron Johnson, talking about a massive AEW Rampage show. Might be the biggest one yet. We will find out. But um, comment down below your thoughts about tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite from Long Island, New York. Hit the like button. If you like what you heard from me and Wes tonight on the review, follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well at Conlon underscore Joseph. Where can they follow you on your socials, my friend? Well, you already know. Follow me on Twitter at big underscore Wes 18. That is B-I-G underscore W-E-S-1-8. I talk A-W Dynamite every single Wednesday night uh, on Twitter. And, of course, on here on the Big Five Field channel. And then every single Friday night, I talk A-W Rampage on Twitter. And, of course, on here on Big Five Field. Uh, I'm also on Twitch. I haven't twitched in a couple weeks. I am planning on trying to get back into it uh, really soon. Just be following me on Twitter uh, to get uh, updates on it. I will be playing more Bully uh, here. I might try to get in a stream tomorrow night, but again, I will keep everybody updated. But I am on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wesley Williams 5. Be sure to be following me on there and turn on notifications on there. So that way you are uh, made aware of when I'll be going live. But I really do want to get back into uh, streaming pretty soon because I know it's been a couple weeks. I've been uh, laying it off some, but I- I've been busy with work and stuff. So I'm just trying, kind of trying to just uh, fill in the time to do it, uh, whether that be in the evening or in the afternoon. Uh, but again, just follow <laughs> me there and then follow me on Twitter at big underscore West 18. And folks, this Friday night, please, you got to be there. You better be watching Friday night. At 9 p.m. Central Time, wherever the hell you are. I don't care Western Time, but Eastern Time, Central Time Zone, where I'm at in the Central Time Zone. doesn't matter. You better be watching live 
this Friday night as we will be seeing the debut of Hook. Fuck everything else. It's all about <laughs> Hook this Friday night. Fuck everything else. Be watching the debut of Hook. I swear you got, and you also better be right here after the show, Big Fight Feel, myself, Cameron Johnson, Joe Scotland talking about Hook's debut this Friday night. So folks, be there for the AEW Rampage review. You do not want to miss out. It's gonna be a parade on Friday night. <laughs> we're gonna have, dude. We gotta have like hook posters set up like everywhere, <laughs> like in the background of uh, each of each of our where we're recording from. Each of us need to have like hook everything hook behind us, so that way it's like we need to you need to put up like a hook graphic to like get us. I really doubt that's going. happening, but I'll try. <laughs> you got you better try at least better try a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We will see you guys on Friday. Have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy. We out. Peace. Oh.